Hello, and today on the episode of About That Girl podcast, we are joined by Christopher Stewardson, this is a graduate filmmaker who graduated last year. He is the writer and director of Mantis, which won a few awards at Visions. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, yeah, we, we were very lucky with that. So, for those who haven't seen the film, give us a brief, brief synopsis. Okay, uh, so Mantis is about uh, a young man called Tim Blaisdell, who wakes up one morning to find that his head and his right hand have been turned into those of a giant praying mantis on the morning of a major job interview. So it's, it, his day isn't going particularly well. Um, and his housemate, uh, Alex, uh, at first he's a bit put off by it as you would be uh, but he slowly comes around to him and, and decides right I'm going to help you I'm going to help you get to this job interview and it's, the film follows their escapades trying to, trying to go to this job interview and, and see how it goes Nice, that's like amazing. It. What awards did you win at Visions? Uh, so we won the uh, Jess, our amazing sound mixer and sound designer. Uh, she won the uh, the Avid Award for sound design. Uh, we were very lucky to win the Stanley Kubrick Prize for cinematic storytelling. Um, this guy's award, bro. <laughs> this is the guy. Um, and I, th- I think that was it. I think those are the two awards that we won. Um, because we we were nominated for a few others, but we didn't. We, I don't think we picked up any others than than those two for the film. But two but two wins for the film was pretty was mm. pretty solid. We were very That's happy good. with that. So how did you first come up with this idea in your in your head? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, what the, uh, what the fuck goes on in there? <laughs> <laughs> don't ask that, mate. You don't want to go down that, down that rabbit hole. Uh, so in November 2016, so it was a good whole year before, before pitching it, um, I was thinking about ideas of stuff I wanted to do, and I knew I wanted to do something that was based in like 50s sci-fi, because that's the stuff that I grew up with, that's the stuff I enjoy watching, um, and I it also was, uh, I wanted to do something that was fun, that would be light-hearted, that wasn't going to take itself too seriously, uh, that you could just have a lot of fun with, uh, and so it kind of started to think of, what, what, all right, what what content, what contexts are relatable, well, job interviews, okay, great. What wouldn't be so good uh, would be being a giant praying mantis at your job interview. <laughs> Obvious, so, yes. Yeah, exactly. You know. My number one pet peeve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just, it just sucks, doesn't it? And we decided, I just decided, right, I'm going to follow that. And I, I pitched it to a couple of the crew members beforehand and just said, look, this is the idea I'm thinking of. Would you be interested? And they, they all got very excited straight away. Mm. Um, and then spent kind of a year slowly but surely developing it so that by the time it came to pitching it, um, it was it was a hell of a lot more kind of fleshed out in terms of what it would eventually look like. Mm. So, how much of you know your original vision you had in your head ended up in the final piece? Did you find a lot of the vision change during the um, production? I think it, the, the 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 base sort of story about it being you know the, the job interview, all that sort of stuff, that was there and that stayed there all the way through. Um, I think it was more little, lots of little things definitely changed mm-hmm. um, things about how the voice of, of Tim when he was a mantis would uh, how that would work that completely changed from being uh, something that sounded a bit more robotic to something that was much more it was much closer to just a, a, a human's voice that was more intelligible uh, and that was down to, to Jess uh, and Jess's suggestions of, of how we can make it sound intelligible because we all realised whilst we were making it that okay we know what he's saying because we've all read the script yeah. but there were definite times when we'd have external help um, and they would listen to it and go and sort of say what's he saying there and we were kind of all we were, we were like, oh but he says this and then we all realised oh that's why because we all know what he's yeah, saying you know, yeah. um, and she had things that I hadn't even thought of in terms of the sound design. So when he blinks, for example, uh, there's a little <laughs> gross squelching mm. sound, and she had found it in the sound of a, 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 a welly boot filled with water and just that being oh, okay. squished. And yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was stuff, stuff that nobody but Jess would have thought of because she's yeah. so good at it. And then uh, other things like the production design, things that were going, going on in the background, stuff that Chantal, our production designer, added, stuff that we hadn't even thought of before. Uh, and she worked very closely with Cole, the director of photography, in terms of shaping the look of it. So I think whilst the story was definitely the same all the way through. It was 
the look and the sound and the feel of it that definitely changed and I think became a hell of a lot better towards the end. Yeah, so obviously this was a student film, final year film. It's a low budget film. Did you find the budget gave you any grief, caused you any problems, or did you find ways around things? Because obviously you had to create the actual <laughs> Mantis, yeah. the Mantis head. Um, I think we were, we were in a, a decent position um, for the most part. Uh, because before we had, uh, before I'd even pitched it, I'd spent a while researching oh, how can we do this mm. head, because I knew that that was going to be one of the biggest problems of pitching it. People are going to go, okay, great story. How the hell are you going to do that yeah. at, at this level? So I luckily I'd found this artist on was it Etsy or yeah, I think it was Etsy that uh, who creates <coughs> these at fiberglass these fantastic, very stylized animal masks. And I'd got in touch with her and sort of asked, hey, can we possibly, you, I'm thinking of doing this film, it'd be really great to use this praying mantis mask that you've got. Um, and she said, yes, that's fine. So that really gave me a lot of confidence to be able yeah. to go, okay, this is exactly how much it's gonna cost. And it ended up costing us about 350 quid, uh, which I think was money well spent in the yeah. end. Um, uh, so I think m money wise uh, because a lot of planning had been done from the outset it, 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 there weren't as many kind of things that later on we were like oh crap we we need this money we need uh, but we were very lucky as well to get um, a, a good chunk of the, the Cynthia Dickinson trust uh, bursary okay, that we applied yeah. for and uh, I attribute one of the, the key successes for us getting that was um, Hannah Cook our producer who was just an absolute joy to work with. She, the way that she budgeted, the way that she had facilitated the whole production really put us in a really strong position to yeah. get that because it was so it was so clear from her work and her work ethic that now this is planned, this is exactly how much money we're gonna spend. Uh, and yeah, planning was the key thing that made the budget work. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we were very lucky. We didn't, we didn't tend to run over budget in any way. So obviously you graduate now. Um, yep. <laughs> have you entered Mantis into any festivals? What have you kind of done with the film? Yeah, so uh, we've entered it into at least 30 festivals. Okay. Uh, and waiting to hear back from quite a few of them. Um, we're currently trying to you know, think of even more festivals that we can put it into, stuff mm. maybe that we that hadn't been quite as on the radar, uh, and trying to find more niche festivals, like the Flatpak Film Festival in Birmingham is really kind of catered to very kind of colourful, quirky films. Okay. Uh, so that's a festival that we thought, oh, okay. Know. Mm. You know, that's something that we could definitely uh, submit it to, and, and things cross that they, they like that. Uh, so, yeah, it's trying to, trying to show it to as many people as we can now. <laughs> awesome. Well, looking back on the film, obviously I've seen the film, it's a great film. But as uh, the director, looking back, is there anything you would have changed about the film uh, if, you, if, you, if you'd done it again? Uh, I, I don't think so, and, and I don't say that to sort of be like, oh, it's perfect, yeah. because, because I, yeah, I don't think it is perfect, but <coughs> I, I think more just because I'm happy with what it was then, um, I, I kind of, I'm happy to just look at it and go, that's what we were all capable of in February 2018 when we made it and uh, I think if I, if I was to change anything about it um, it would just maybe be um, I, I don't know, making sure that some of the if, if we'd had a much, much, much larger budget than this mm. We would have loved to have had a full-scale animatronic for the for the mantis okay, head, so yeah. that like the, the actual mandibles were moving, the antenna were moving. Um, that it, and that's kind of a cosmetic change. It's not something that was you know whether you had that animatronic or not, the, the, the film would still roughly be the same. So mm. <laughs> it sounds really really <laughs> cocky and pretentious to be like, oh, I'm fine no, with it, but I, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm fine I'm with it. You own that. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you got the leather jacket. <laughs> Own it. And uh, where can we watch Mantis? Is it available online or is it still kind so of it's not available, festival rounds? Yeah, it's not available just yet because uh, we're putting it into as many festivals as we can. Um, but I'm hoping that once we've once we've got it kind of off the ground a bit and yeah. we're, we're off and running, then we then we can have it online somewhere that we can easily access it for everyone to see. Awesome. So, what general advice would you give to final year students doing their graduate film? <laughs> is there anything you wish you would have known? before you went into your final year film? Oh, I enjoy it. 
yeah. really enjoy it because um, once it's gone, you you miss it. Um, yeah. And uh, you know, for, for you guys in particular, you know, you guys have had tremendous success with your Indiegogo. I mean, yeah. Ninety was it ninety six percent that you funded now? Oh, we've hit it. it, it oh, you've hit it. Yeah. It's, well, a, it's all dirty Irish money though from the dark. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, you you guys have hit that budget, and you still had what is it? Still a month to go on your yeah. On, yeah. I think that shows pretty significantly that you've that <coughs> lots and lots of people have faith in your project that people mm. really Nutters. think this is going to be great <laughs> and, if it, it, and if that and, and it, well, if that's the case I think that I'd say have the, have that faith yourself clearly everybody else is, is on board mm. um, everybody I've spoken to uh, who, who is in our year group who's, who's graduated are all saying they're looking forward to seeing your film yeah. um, you know the promo video you, you guys did was really really good mm. uh, and so just have faith in it because everybody else does it's quite fun with it really. yeah. Chris, <laughs> have fun with we've it. got you on we very have to quickly talk about Halloween 2018 what was your thoughts I, I loved it. Yeah. I thought it was great. I thought it was. I think it's the best since the original. Okay, because I was going to ask where do you like rank in your rank? Yeah, so, your yeah, so, ranking? so my ranking is is the original Halloween because mm. let's face it, nothing's ever going to touch that. Yeah, yeah, uh, and then Halloween 2018 because it, it was so good. Do you think it was the most brutal Myers we've seen? I think the the Rob Zombie Myers is certainly mm. one of the most brutal. Um, but I think that the brutality of the of the new of the this might personally spoiler alert. I wasn't expecting the kid to get killed in no. the car, and he just kills. No, him. yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> spoiler alert. What, what, are you, what are you planning to? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh, yeah, I wasn't expecting it to be as brutal as it was. But I think the reason the brutality works here and not in the Rob Zombie version is because. The Rob Zombie version, it seems like it's it's, it's trying too hard to be mm. brutal and to be yeah. edgy, and then the, the new film, you're totally not expecting it, uh, and that's why it's so much more shocking. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think the brutality works. Awesome. Well, thank you for watching. Chris Stewartson, what about that girl podcast? Thanks very much.